Welcome chemists. This is another pre-class video. This one is for determining compound compositions. And the first one I want to talk about is what's called atom fraction. We will see something like this again when we get into discussing gases and the behavior of gases. But the atom fraction is just simply going to be the number of atoms of element divided by the total atoms in compound. And so if you have something like, say, carbon dioxide, this has one atom of carbon. This has two atoms of oxygen. So this is three atoms total. So if you wanted the atom fraction of the carbon, then you would have one atom of carbon over the three. That would give you one third or two atoms of oxygen over three atoms in the compound. You may also recall previously at the end of the atoms unit doing some calculations of molecular masses. And you may recall calculating the molecular mass for cisplatin. And so this is just a little bit of a larger molecule. There is only one platinum atom, or one atom of platinum. And there are two, six, two, one, so eight, 10, 11 total atoms overall, okay? Of course, with all of these, you could express it as a fraction, but recognize that you might want to also be able to change these into decimals. And for these that are counted numbers, even though they have unlimited significant figures, for these decimals, it might make more sense to do, say, three or four decimal places. And so 1 11th, you would also want to simplify. And 1 11th is 0 0.09, 0 0.09, and then that repeats as well. So this is just atom fraction. This does come up here and there. It does make sense if you're trying to talk about molecules in particular. But um, what we're really going to use more of is we're going to use percent composition more. So let's stick with carbon dioxide and cisplatin for our examples here. So percent composition or mass percent. This is the main way we're going to think about determining the composition of a compound if we know what's in it. So or percent composition. And with carbon dioxide or with cisplatin, we're always going to start this off like we're finding the molar mass or the molecular mass, where we list the atoms in the compound, we list how many are there, we give the average atomic masses of the elements, we multiply across, and we add down. So we're always going to start off this way. We could say grams per mole, or we could say AMU per molecule, OK? And in fact, you do need to know this molar mass or this molecular mass to calculate the mass percent or the percent composition. You also do need to know the total mass of any given element in that compound. So you always want to start off this way when you're trying to determine or calculate mass percent or percent composition. From here, we're gonna approach this the same kind of way we did with the atom fractions, where we're interested in the portion of an element over the portion of the whole. And so with atom fraction, it was the number of atoms over the total number of atoms. We could even put that there, total number of atoms. Here, it's the mass of an element over the total mass of the compound. So from this step here, we would divide each of these by the molar mass. And also 
multiply by 100%. And I'll show you on the next example how you could combine those. So from here, then you would plug into your calculator and you can plug in 12.01 divided by 44.01 times 100. And again, four sig figs here would be appropriate. You might be able to keep one more place, but I would say this would be 27.29% carbon, okay? This would be, let me move my calculator to make sure you can see that. This would be, the mass percent of carbon in carbon dioxide, okay? If you go through and you do the same calculation then for the uh, oxygen and take the 32 divided by 44.01 times 100, you get 72.71% oxygen. Both of these values together would be the percent composition of CO2 Either one of these individually would be the individual mass percent of that element, okay? So the percent composition is always gonna be the percents of all of the elements in the compound. And the other way you can check your work here, if you'll notice, is that when you add these two numbers up, you should get pretty close to 100% because that would be all elements in the compound. So let's go ahead and do cisplatin. So here's cisplatin. The formula is two chlorines, two, six hydrogens, two nitrogens, and one platinum. So for practice, why not go ahead and build up the molecular mass or the molar mass table until you can calculate the molar mass of this. You could also probably find your work for this on a prior worksheet. This is your last chance to pause. Last chance to pause the video and practice finding the molar mass for cisplatin. And the molar mass for cisplatin would be just over 300 grams per mole or 300 AMU per molecule. Now from this step here, we would wanna divide by the molar mass. We would wanna divide by the molar mass. I'm waiting for my camera to catch up, there it goes. And we would also still wanna multiply by 100%. So one of the ways you could combine those is you could say that you're going to multiply by 100% over the molar mass. And that's going to be what you want to do for each one of these. Now you want to show how you're doing this for each one, but realistically, you're doing the same thing. And that's what those little quote marks mean. You could use that whenever you're trying to copy something down, as long as you've shown it at least once, and as long as you're sure that you are supposed to do that same thing to all of those lines. So here you would calculate your percents. Let's go ahead quickly and estimate what we would expect to see for our percents here. So notice the mass of the platinum is the largest mass in the compound. What would this be pretty close to if you rounded up to the hundreds? Hopefully you said it's close to 200. And if you think about taking 200 over 300, what does that mean we should get close to for our percent here? It does mean we should get close to two thirds. It's not gonna be exactly 0.666666 or 66.666666% like the two thirds for the atom fraction of oxygen up here in carbon dioxide, but it should be close to that. And then what's gonna be our smallest percent? Well, we've got basically six over 300, right? which would be like what, say divide both by two, so this would be two, or by three, so this would be two over 100. Two over 100 sure sounds a lot like say 2%. So we should have something that's close to 66%, maybe a little bit less, and something that's close to 2%. You should be able to go through and estimate for the others as well to know what a reasonable answer is. But why don't you go ahead and pause the video here and calculate the percents. Less chance to pause. And as we estimated, we have close to 2% for hydrogen and we have close to 66% for the platinum. And you should recognize that the other two percentages are somewhere in between those. Now, the last thing you can do here to check your work is you can make sure these add up to 100. And when you add these up, you actually find that they add to 100.01. This is not exactly 100 like we would expect, and the reason why really is because a few of these got rounded up and overall 
these percents are probably slightly more rounded up than they should be to get to 100%. Now, that's hard when you've got more than two elements. So you might get 100.02 or 100.01. You might get 99.99 or 99.98, but you shouldn't get 105 as your percent, okay? So you always wanna make sure you're close to 100. If you only have two elements, one of those could have been rounded up, but if one of those was rounded up, then that would mean that the other one had to have been rounded down. And so overall, whenever you have a compound with only two elements, their percents will, their mass percents or the percent composition will always add to exactly 100. Whenever you have more than two elements, it's always a possibility that just because of rounding here, you might not get exactly 100 here at the end. Again, this is where maybe keeping a few extra digits beyond what you would really need would be useful, but um, we're not too worried about it as long as it comes out pretty close to being 100. So I hope this helps you know how to calculate percent compositions, both atom fractions and actual percent compositions and mass percents. Remember the language is percent composition is always all of the percents for all of the elements in a given compound. Mass percent would be mass percent typically of a single element. So I could ask you for the percent composition of cisplatinum, it would be all four of these numbers. I could also ask you for the mass percent of platinum in cisplatin, and it would just be the 65.02%. So take a look at these, maybe try a few more compounds on your own, like say water, or carboplatin, which was the other molecule that you did the molar mass of before. There you go. Or you could even pick any of the compounds you've done recently in the naming and formula writing worksheet. So thanks for watching. Please send in questions. We will be doing practice with this in the next class.